Hey mamas, time for another motherhood thoughts video and this time I want to talk about how you can keep pursuing your relationship with Jesus while being a mom. So, when you are single, you have a lot more time on your hands. You can spend, you know, an hour plus in quiet time with the Lord and it's a beautiful beautiful precious time and you can journal and you can do studies and you can have worship moments and it's really wonderful and after you get married I mean you can you can still do that and then when you start having children it changes and the ability to spend those huge chunks of time just one-on-one -on -one you and Jesus they kind of go away and it turns into well I have two minutes or sometimes it's 10 seconds or 30 seconds or if you know <laughs> you're lucky and everything's cooperating you know you might have um, you know 10 minutes or if they're napping maybe you get 30 minutes um, but anyway, I wanted to encourage you and share what I have discovered with this, and I just pray it encourages you. So, it is easy in this journey to feel super guilty about it. Be like, wow, God, I'm so sorry. I feel like I'm not putting you first. I wake up in the morning, and it's go, 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 and the kids need me, and they do this, and they need that, and... And I'm not able to spend that time with you that I was able to do, and you... It's very easy to feel like, wow, I'm not prioritizing my relationship with God anymore. I'm letting it slide. This is bad, etc. Well, here's the truth, lovely mothers. He knows that we're going through this. He knows that our time changes and the time that we have to spend like we used to is not there in such large amounts anymore and he's okay with it he loves and treasures this is the truth he loves and treasures any time that we spend with him it means everything to him so if it is 10 seconds if it is 10 minutes if it is 30 seconds whatever it is take it and spend that time with him and from my own life right now, here's kind of an example of how I do it. My quiet time with the Lord ends up usually being when I first wake up, I like starting the day with him. I find the rest of my day goes way better if I do that. I just say, here God, here's the first part of the day. Thank you. You know, I like to thank him for my sleep that I got. So I start out on a thankful note, even if the sleep that I got, um, to my standards <laughs> was not that amazing. And I really wish I got more, but I thank him anyway. And that helps. And then I have, uh, the U version Bible app, which is great. And I have the Kayla verse of the day. So I, I go and look at the verses of the day. Sometimes that's all I have time for. And yes, it's while I'm getting ready for the day and usually while I'm on the toilet. Because let's face it, you're sitting down. We all have to sit down and do business every so often during the day in the bathroom. And so I found that is a great time to kind of multitask in that way. And so sometimes all I get in is... Uh, the verse of the day. I also have a um, email devotional by Joseph Prince that I like to read if I have enough time. He has amazing devotionals. Highly recommend him. And then um, sometimes I'll have a little more time and I'll be able to go and read more verses or a chapter or something in the Bible. And I'll do it either, excuse me, on my phone in the Version Bible app or with one of my um, actual Bibles. And I do love how those feel like you just flip the pages and to me like the words just leap off in a, in a different way and I can write in it. So I love that. And then with the Bible app, Version Bible app, it's free. 
you can go through all these different translations and just get different levels of meaning, which is super cool. So I do that. And then the other thing um, that I do that I've started doing, especially like involving my kids, is just um, with them, I guess, kind of teaching them a little bit of like saying, wow, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, God, for creating today. Thank you, God, for giving us everything we need to do today. Thank you for giving us your refreshing and your hope and your joy and your peace and your strength. And please show us what you want us to do today. We love you and we bless you. Thanks for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. Something like that. But I have found that when I let God plan my day, when I let God lead me through the day, it goes way better than when I try to do it. Now, do I remember to do this all the time? No. <laughs> no. And sometimes I'll start my day off like that and then I'll forget. And then I'll get up in a little, you know, stressed ball and be like, oh, that's right. Sorry, God, I forgot to ask you about this. What do you think I should do? How should I prioritize these things? And he knows. And there's been some days where I've woken up in a bad mood. You know, you didn't get much sleep. Kids may be fighting a cold, whatever. And you're just like, I don't want to do today. I really don't. And so I've told God, I don't want to do today. I don't want to do it. You do it. And I've just kind of, uh, just kind of <laughs> thrown it at him. And those have ended up being some of my best days. Some of my best days. Because I'm not leaning on myself to figure everything out. I've just tossed it to him. I have cast my care of the day, you know. Uh, that verse in First Peter, cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. It's real and it works. So that and then invite him into everything. I encourage you to invite him into every part of your day. Talk to him about it like you talk to anybody else. You know, it can be like through your mind. You can be muttering under your breath. You can be talking out loud. He can take it. You know, he's a good, good father and he loves his relationship with us. And, you know, how does a relationship grow? Communication is a big, big, big one. So just be like, God, what do you think about this? God, I don't know which one of these to do next. And I feel like I'm on my last thread, etc. He always has an answer and he always has a hug and a reassurance of his love for us. Uh, the last thing I like to do, and I may tie this into a, a different video also, but I have started asking him, okay, God, what do you think about me right now? Especially, it's super powerful if I remember to do this after I've lost my temper, I have reacted in a way that I don't like towards my children or I just feel like I'm in a really bad place and I feel like a failure as a mom um you know and all those all those lies and all those nasty negative thoughts just kind of come crashing and I say okay God what do you say about this what do you say about me right now and I have only ever heard I love you you're doing a fantastic job. Keep going. You can do this, etc. Encouraging, encouraging stuff that just melts away all that, oh, you know, in the moment. So I hope you are encouraged by that. Don't stress about it. It's a relationship. And as relationships go, you know, they ebb and they flow. And it's just, just let it go. Just let it go. You don't have to make it into something. It's all about the love that's growing in your heart. And you know what? The Bible says we love because he first loved us. And He can. we can always ask for more love. Like, God, would you give me more love? Would you help me see this person? Give me a heart for her. <laughs> my child in the situation. Whatever. And he will. He's so gracious and good to do that. So don't stress out. 
he goes at the pace that we can go at. And the Bible says he gently leads those with young. This is all about grace, mama. It's not about works. It's not about have tos. It's not about you should. It's not about, you know, the law or a religion or a religious type of existence. It's about grace and the relationship with Jesus. So if you don't know Jesus, I would love for you to know him. I would love for you to just ask him into your heart and let him come in and make make his home with you. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone will open to me, I will come in and have dinner with him. It's not, I will come in and tell you all the things that are wrong with you and tell you, go clean it up and look at that mess. Wow. No, he's like, I will come in and eat with you. I will have a relationship with you. I want to love on you. And it's really, really beautiful. So if you don't know him and you want to, here's just a basic little prayer that you can pray. It's, there's no magical words about it. It's just that cry of your heart going, Jesus, I want you now. Please come. So um, you can go something like this. Jesus, <laughs> thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for taking the punishment for every horrible thing I've ever done, have done, and will ever do. Thank you for washing me clean with your blood. I receive your forgiveness. Please come into my heart and rule over my life. I love you. I trust you. Thanks for loving me. In Jesus' name, amen. And there you go. Hallelujah. Welcome to the family. All right. I love you. I bless you. And if you want a Bible, pretty much any church out there will give you one for free. And... There's a YouVersion Bible app, totally free. You can download it anytime. So, I love you, and I bless you. And once again, he, he, okay, Holy Spirit, keeps giving me more thoughts. Um, if you just received Jesus into your heart, <laughs> congratulations, and welcome to the family. I would highly encourage you to download the YouVersion Bible app and just start reading in um, the book of John. It's a really, really good book. Any of the four Gospels. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And, it's, and they tell the story of Jesus. And it's cool. The four of them, they tell the same story, but from different perspectives. So you can get um, just a really cool picture of Jesus. What he thinks about you. How much he loves you and cares for you. And what he did to save you and rescue you. So... Okay, I think I think that's all the Holy Spirit wanted me to say. So I love you and I bless you. In the name of Lord Jesus, peace and blessing. I'll talk to you next time.